I've got a brand new switch, but I have a problem. Here's a copper ethernet cable. I can't connect the copper ethernet cable to the switch. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? It only has these ports that require a QSFP28 to be inserted. So I could insert this QSFP28 and then I could connect a fiber cable to this port. So as an example, I'd need to use a fiber cable such as this. This fiber cable has an MPO connector. So I could connect this to the switch. Now the first question is, why do we have ports such as this? Why do we have SFP ports on this switch as an example, rather than say, fixed ports such as these? And the answer is essentially flexibility. I could connect a copper interface, but I could remove that and use a fiber SFP. This is 10 gig fiber and this is 10 gig copper. These ports are fixed ethernet ports. So all I can use on these ports is ethernet cabling. So copper ethernet cabling such as this. I can't connect a fiber cable to this port as an example. Whereas on this port, I could use a fiber cable. This fiber cable is using what's called an LC connector. I could connect fiber there, and then I could, as an example, connect that to a network card such as this. I could have a fiber connection directly from a PC to the switch. In this example, this is only 10 gig fiber, but that port on the PC is 25 gig. So what I should actually be using is a 25 gig SFP. But notice the flexibility. A single port on the switch allows me to connect different types of interfaces and different types of fiber as well as ethernet. So again, here I've got 25 gig from a network interface to a port on the switch. So that's fiber. Here I could use copper. So remove that, plug copper directly into the switch. So these are known as SFPs or small form factor pluggables. Or let's go faster and connect a DAC cable directly to the switch. And this gives me 50 gig. So a single interface on the switch gives me a lot of options, lots of Lots of interfaces can be connected to the port on the switch. Now that's a modern implementation, but it didn't start there. These are actually SFP pluses because we support 10 gig. Before we had SFP plus, we had SFP. This is a one gig SFP. Before that, we had 100 meg SFP. So this only supports 100 meg, not even a gig. And before that, we had what were called GBEX or gigabit interface converter. This one supports a one gig fiber interface. This would go in an interface such as this on a switch. This is an old 2950 Cisco switch. If we go back even further, let's go to the beginning of networking. This is a Cisco 10 base T transceiver, and that would be connected on an AUI port, for instance, on a 2500 series router. So this is an old Cisco router, and that would give me an ethernet connection. So I've got ethernet, on an AUI port. So this AUI port supports 10 base T. But before that, we had 10 base 2. So I could use the same interface and attach this transceiver to get 10 base 2. Here's a digital transceiver. So something like this could be used for 10 base 2. You can see how things have, a, have changed over time. So 10 base 2 became something like this much smaller transceiver, but let's go to the birth of networking. Here I've got 10 base 5, and here you can see I've got a vampire tap. This would dig into the cable. So you'd actually put the 10 base 5 cable here, and that would clip into the cable. In those days, you would typically use a drop cable to connect the router or device to your 10 base 5 transceiver. So you would connect it something like that. I've created videos previously showing you how to set up a 10 base 5 network. Notice the flexibility. I could take that and replace it with a transceiver like this, 10 base 2. Gives me Ethernet using a specific type of cable. More modern example, 10 base T using 
copper twisted pair cabling rather than coaxial cable, which you'd have with 10 base two or 10 base five. So that's okay, but that's really outdated today. Next step is GBEX. So on a switch like this, the idea is, is that you can plug it in and take it out. I could take this out and then perhaps put a copper GBEC into the switch. But using our modern example, SFP Plus, there's copper, Ethernet in there. I could take that out and then put a fiber connection in. That's 25 gig Ethernet using multi-mode fiber. So, so LC connectors such as these to connect to the SFP. I know a lot of people are gonna complain that I don't put the covers on. This equipment is just for demo. Then again, we've got 100 gig ethernet. These are direct attached cables. They allow me, for instance, to have 100 gig ethernet to another switch. That's an example of a whole bunch of transceivers. Here's a Cisco 1000 series switch. You have to be careful about the transceivers that your switches support. So this one only supports one gigabit. I couldn't put a 10 gig SFP in there, it wouldn't work. This model from Aruba supports one gig, supports 10 gig, supports 25 gig, supports 50 gig. Now I'm hoping that that was a practical demonstration of various types of transceivers that you may find in the real world or perhaps in a museum. I mean, I've got my own little museum going on here with a 10 base five. I've had some people tell me that they still find it out there, which I'm very surprised about. Um, 10 base five, you might come across 10 base two. Some of you have been unfortunate enough to still work with 10 base five or 10 base two. Twisted pair ethernet is the most common type of cabling that you're gonna come across, but you may also come across fiber. And I'll cover fiber cables in a different video and the connectors, you get different types of connectors. Here's an LC connector as an example, and here's MPO, different types of connectors, different types of fiber. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble. I wanna wish you all the very best.